Welcome back. We've been working with trig equations. And so we're going to continue looking at some more examples of solving these trigonometric equations. And so what we've now transitioned to are trig equations where the angle is not just x or theta or just a single variable. It's There's something more to it. So in this uh, next example here, uh, we're dealing with tangent 3 theta plus 1 equals 0. So here we're dealing with a triple angle. So what I'd like to do is just remember that we're dealing with theta between 0 and 2 pi. And then I just adjust this angle here so it fits my new angle. So I need a 3 theta, so to do that I'd have to multiply theta by 3. So my new constraints for this new variable will be between uh, 0 and 6 pi. All right, it's triple, so it's going to actually go around three times around the circle. And then the rest of the process is very similar to the last example. So of course we do need to get the trig function by itself. We're going to replace the variable right, with a dummy variable. We're going to make this replacement tangent u equals negative 1. And just like we've done in equations before, we need to find the reference angle. So, u sub r. So, tangent here is equal to negative 1. So, we'll be looking for what angle would give us a tangent of 1. And that reference angle is the angle in the first quadrant. So, that's one of our key values, our memorized values. Right, 45 degrees or pi over 4 uh, in radians. Okay. So that's what we do with our U. And then, of course, once we found one of the angles, once we found the reference angle, we take that reference angle and plot it into the quadrants that match up with the sign of our answer. Okay, that matches up with the sign of our answer. So tangent being negative would put us in the second quadrant. And also in the fourth quadrant. Where all students take C. So they're all positive in the first sign and the second tangent the third, cosine the four. And so we would put that reference angle in. And of course, in the second quadrant, we would be short of pi. So it's going to be one minus one fourth. One minus one fourth. And that would give us uh, u equals pi over four. And then I don't know, pi over 4, sorry. Never mind. Stop working for a second. 3 pi over 4. And in the fourth quadrant, it would be 2 pi minus pi over 4 would be 7 pi over 4. And then what we have to do, though, for, u, for theta, is we have to continue finding answers. So... We need to go three full turns around the circle. So we found one turn around the circle, 3 pi and 7 pi. So we do that. We add on 2 pi. And again, think of these again as uh, just like mixed numbers. So that's 2 and 3 fourths. So 2 times 4 would be 8. That would be 11 pi over 4. Right. And then we do the same thing with the 7 pi over 4. We add a 2 pi onto it.
that'll be two and seven fourths, which we convert by taking two times four is eight plus seven, 15 pi over four. Just using that old technique to convert uh, a mixed number into an improper fraction. All right, and then the same thing, we just keep going. Uh, take those answers and add on four pi. So again, just using that old trick there, take the four times the denominator, four times four is 16, plus three is 19. So we get the answer 19 uh, pi over four. And I'm writing these out for the sake of clarity. Uh, of course, if you can often compute these without writing out this, detail and that's fine. And so our last one would be 23 pi over 4. <coughs> so those are all the answers for you, but we don't want you, we want theta. So we go back and realize u is replacing 3 theta. And we set 3 theta equal to all of our potential answers. Uh, and we know we have them all because we've now went back around the circle three times. And that's what 6 pi is, three times around. So if we kept going, we would be too far. Okay, so we're going to have 3 theta equals 3 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4, 11 pi over 4, 15 pi over 4. 19 pi over 4, and 23 pi over 4. And so to solve for 3 theta equals, we should take all those answers, and we could divide by 3, but since they're already fractions, it's a whole lot easier to think of it as multiplying by a third. Right? And then we just go through and simplify to get our answers. So, one third times three pi over four, the threes will cancel out, and we'll just get pi over four. Uh, one third and seven pi over four will be seven pi over 12. And then 11 pi over 12. And when we get to the 15, the three and the 15 would cancel, leaving us with five pi over 4, and then we keep going, 1 third and 19 pi over 4 would be 19 pi over 12, and we finish up with 23 pi <coughs> over 12 as our last answer there. And notice that that last answer, 23 pi over 12, that's 1 and 11 twelfths, that's smaller than 2 pi, and so again, that's why we start with this initial process here of you know building up our range of answers so that we make sure that at the end we have everything and we're not missing anything we don't have anything extra then we have just the solutions for theta that fall between 0 and 2 pi